God is truly amazing. I must give God thanks for this opportunity today. Amen. God knows what's best. Hallelujah. You know, when, when I heard that the, the women's department was putting on a ladies' conference, the first thing that came to mind was that only women speakers should be there. And so ever since the first year, I've been saying the same thing to myself. But then if I keep that mindset, I would have missed out on what God is doing. Because whether you're a man or a woman, every one of us have something to offer to the other person. Amen. You know, the worst thing is someone who is selective about their teacher because they don't think that everyone can teach them something. Those are the people who oftentimes get left behind. But I'm so grateful that God has given me the opportunity, amen, to be here with you. And I'm so grateful. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I must give God thanks to uh, Minister Hall for giving me this blessing, amen. Come on, an incredible woman of God, hallelujah. We have been having a wonderful time so far. I've been, you know, listening to some mighty speakers and they have been doing an incredible job. I can't wait to see what happened next year. Because this year is like the year of transition where we are coming off of uh, uh, Zoom. And now we are fully transitioning into in-house. Amen. So probably next year we are going to have completely in-house worship and conference. And, you know, from here, very soon probably we are going to break out into stadiums and coliseums and you know, we're going to take over streets and cities and towns and you name it. And I want you to keep that mindset because once God is a part of you, you can never tell the magnitude of how far and how big and how wide it will get. Because God is ready to burst beyond the corners of the church. To break out beyond the walls of limitations and take this thing big. And so we are so grateful for Minister Hall, God bless you. Put your hands together and bless the Lord for her and her team as well. God bless you. I must give our thanks to Reverend Dr. Williams. Amen. Our dear pastor and leader of this wonderful flock. Amen. And how can I do this without all of you great people? Praise the Lord, great people. Praise the Lord, great people. Hallelujah. Now look to your neighbor and tell them, touch me, touch me, touch me, touch me. Hallelujah. Now tell them, now tell them that, turn to them and tell them, listen, that's what greatness feels like. Come on, oh, come on, oh. that's what greatness feels like. Come on, we got to get with it, we got to get with it. Hallelujah. Let me quickly dive into our word today because I know that time is already far spent when it comes to my time. I only have so much time and I'm going to do my best. In fact, I will honor the time given unto me. Amen. This is a conference. Must be I must be disciplined. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Isaiah 60. I know that there are many people who have read it already, but I still need to read it just in case there is something that God wants to say to me and say to you as well. Amen. Wonderful. In fact, put your hands together for my wife as well. Amen. Amen. And the little one inside too, amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> God bless you, God bless you, amen. I don't know. <laughs> God is true. Isaiah chapter 60, from 1 to 3. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 60, from 1 to 3. Hallelujah. 6, 0. From one to three. And it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and thy, the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Pay careful attention to that. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise up upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Touch your neighbor and tell him, look out for it. 
and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. What a mighty God we serve. You see, after all that we have just read, we don't even need no preaching. Because what God just said, it is a promise, it is prophetic, and it's personal. Ah, what a mighty God we serve. Today I want to function under the topic, a reflection of his glory. And usually I don't do this, but I'm going to use a subtopic. I'm going to operate under the subtopic, the table is about to turn. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We exalt your name and we worship you. God Almighty, we understand that we are just mere men. And Father, we cannot do what you are capable of doing. In fact, Lord, this is your time. This is your moment. This is your people. And so, Father, have your way now. For we understand, O oh God, that you share your glory with no man or nothing. And rightly so, because you went to the cross all by yourself. Eighty and two miles you traveled, O oh God. But yet still you spared no expenses for sin. And you paid the price in full. And so we give you the glory. We give you the worship. We give you the praise. Because you are more than worthy of it all. Table control now. Bless your people. So that they can have a new level of understanding. They can be empowered. And their lives will never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. A reflection of his glory. Under the subtopic, the table is about to turn. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor and tell him, are you ready for the turning? Are you ready for the turning? Hallelujah. No doubt we're living in a time that is considered as a turning point. And for those who understand how to read the time of life and those who understand the position that we're in currently as a generation, as a people, they would agree with me. You know, we have extended ourselves as far as we can. And in most cases, we have overly extended ourselves. And so now we can do nothing else but turn. We have gone as far as we can. We have pushed the limits. We have pushed the laws. We have pushed many different circumstances. And now we are at a place where if we don't turn, then something is about to break. And the thing about being at a turning point is that anytime you are at a turning point, something must shift. And anytime something must shift, and something will shift, and something has shift, it means now that the first will be the last. And the last will be the first. And I say that to say this, that there are some of you that God is about to take from a place of being a nobody to be an inspiration to everybody. The table is about to turn. There are some of you here that the Lord is about to take from a place of low the bar to set the bar higher so that they can see the glory of God. The table is about to turn. Uh, I just feel like God is talking to me. Feel like God is talking to me. Because I know for many of you, for many years, you have allowed people to talk you down and dim your light. You had many great ideas, you got many great visions, and you allow them to talk you out of it and dim your light. And you shrink down to nothing. And what you don't understand is that one point at allowing people to dim your light can cause you a lifetime of pain. Some of you are probably still suffering. Some of you are probably still hurting simply because somebody dim your light. And one of the hardest things to do whenever your light has been dimmed is to rise up and shine again. Because the light is dim. 
You are a reflection of his glory. Come on, say that after me. I am a reflection. I am a reflection. Yes, and don't care about what nobody thinks. Don't care about who knows about your weakness or your situation. You're still a reflection. The last time I checked, a diamond that is covered up in mud is still a diamond. And if you clean it off, it will begin to shine. Touch your neighbor and tell me, just give him some time, let me clean up myself. Just give me some time, let me clean up, let me clean up, let me clean up. Let me clean up, let me clean up, let me clean up. Wait until I get off this dirt. Wait until I get off this mud. I'm going to shine, I'm, I'm going to shine, I'm going to shine. And guess what? This time nothing is going to stop me because I'm going to shine. See, this is a decision that you have to make. It's personal. It's all about you now. Don't, don't think about nobody else. It's your time to shine. And don't care about what nobody else thinks. Because some people, they don't want you to shine simply because you're too late to turn on the switch. My time to shine. Now, you need to understand this. That any time we think about reflection, the first thing that comes to mind is a mirror. A mirror comes to mind whenever you think about your reflection. But I want you to understand that in order for a mirror to properly be effective, it must possess a certain level or a certain kind of characteristics. And I'm going to give you a few things that a mirror must possess in order for it to properly reflect any image. Hallelujah. Number one, a mirror must be truthful. A mirror must be truthful. Here is what I mean. You see, anytime you go in front of a mirror, that mirror must show you exactly what you look like. The mirror must be truthful. And the mirror doesn't matter if you are emotionally unstable or if you feel bad about the way you look or the mirror cannot give you its opinion in fact, the mirror cannot filter your face. The mirror must show exactly what you look like. The mirror must be truthful. So guess what? If you're skinny, the mirror must show you're skinny. If you're otherwise, the mirror must show you otherwise. If your nose is big, the mirror must show you that your nose is big. Now, you've got to understand this. You've, you've got to understand this. That, let, let's reason for a bit. Now, you've got to understand this. But the reason why a mirror exists in the first place is to tell you your faults. The mirror exists to tell you your faults. When you look in the mirror, what you look for? Your faults. You're looking there to see what's wrong with you. And so that's why a mirror exists. Because, you know, sometimes you might have your friends and your family... And, and, and sometimes, you know, when they tell you certain things that is wrong with you, you feel offended. And you might begin to fight and you might begin to push them down and all kind of stuff. And so the mirror exists to take away that conflict and to solve that problem. Because sometimes it, it, it is not that you don't like to be corrected, but sometimes some people, the way how they correct you make the difference. Because, you know, sometimes when some people are correcting you, they correct you in a way as if they have been waiting for something to be wrong with you so that they can beat you down. Yeah, they, and, and, sometimes, and sometimes the problem has been gone a long time, but they're still reminding it to you every day. They're reminding you about it every day. Oh, remember when you did this? And remember when you did that. But if a day co corrected you in love and in the right spirits, then they would understand that whatever mistake you made in the past or whatever it was that was your fault, then that is long gone. That was my yesterday. Today, I'm a new person. So the mirror must be truthful. The mirror must be truthful. Hallelujah. The mirror cannot give you its opinion. The mirror cannot say, you know, I will shrink this. I, I don't want this person to feel bad, so I won't show them the truth. But the mirror is truthful. It has to be truthful. 
Hallelujah. And as a child of God, if you're going to reflect the glory of God, you must possess the spirit of truth. You must possess the spirit of truth. Jesus Christ says, I am the truth, the way and the life. Now, if Jesus is the truth and the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you, then it means that you must possess truth in your inward parts. You, you, you can look good on the outside and you know everything is not going right. There's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to being truthful, you must be truthful. So that's number one. The first characteristic of a mirror is what? Your truth. You, the mirror must be truthful. Number two, watch this now. Number two, watch this now. A mirror must be clean. Oh boy. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and ask them, is your mirror clean? Is your mirror clean? I, I, I'll give you a joke. I remember one time, I remember one time I, I went somewhere and I went, you know, to check myself in the mirror. And I tell you, I have to be doing like this. <laughs> you can't see nothing because there was so much smudge on the glass. And so you can't even see yourself. Properly, you have to be peeking around and see if you can find any space to see yourself. You see, when a mirror is messy, it cannot reflect properly. So the mirror must be clean. And the Bible tells me that God said, listen, I am holy, and as I am holy, you're also supposed to be holy. You've got to be clean. You've got to be pure. You've got to be righteous. The Bible says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy. Got to be holy first. So number two, the mirror must be clean. Number three, the mirror must be impartial. In other words, it doesn't matter who you are or where you have been, the mirror must reflect you. It must reflect you. You see, if a pastor stands up in front of the mirror, the mirror must reflect him. If a prisoner stands up in front of the mirror, the mirror must reflect him. If a Chinese person stands up in front of the mirror, the mirror must reflect them. If an Indian person stands up in front of the mirror, if a black, doesn't matter who you are, the mirror must be impartial. And so it is with every child of God. We must be impartial. We must possess the spirit of love. You can't love some and not love the other. Jesus said, by this you will know that you are mine. God Almighty. By this you will know that you are mine. Not if you work miracles. Not if you are rich. Not if you have a big house on the hill. Not if you drive a nice car. Not if you preach a good message that the anointing begins to move and people begin to break out in tongues and healing begin to... No, no. By this you will know that you are mine if you love. What a mighty God. He's so powerful, but yet still he narrowed it down so fine. So small to the place of love. You must possess the spirit of love. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, do you love me? No, 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 no. This, this can make it very difficult if you're, if you're coming in the same car and you had a little argument. <laughs> but you know that you truly love someone and someone truly loves you. Where it doesn't matter what you guys had, what you guys had with each other, love still remains. You guys might have disagreements, but it doesn't mean that you guys become disconnected because you still have love. You know, sometimes I see some family members, they will fight with each other. They will cuss each other, but you dare not get involved <laughs> because they still love each other. <laughs> 
that's still my brother, that's still my sister, that's still my wife, that's still my husband. And it doesn't matter what we have, don't get involved because sometimes the people who love each other have disagreement. Turn to your neighbor and ask him again, do you love me? Come on now, don't lie to me. Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? When you see my weakness, do you love me? When I messed up, do you love me? When I don't come to church every Sunday, do you love me? When I cheat, when I steal, if I made certain mistakes, do you still love me? Because I want you to understand that love is not conditional. Meaning that it doesn't change when people change. Because you see, some people are like night and day. They turn on and off without a switch. They keep changing with the time. They change with situations and circumstances. But when you have love, see, it doesn't matter what kind of changes you go through. Your love should remain the same. Do you love me? And so the third one is that it must be impartial. And watch this now, number four, number four, and we're going to stop here because we don't want to run out of time. Number four, a mirror must possess, or a mirror must work in the presence of light. A mirror must have the presence of light. A mirror must work with the presence of light. You see, see if you're going to reflect the glory of God, your deeds cannot be dark. The Bible tells me that Jesus came into this world and man reject him. The reason why they reject him was not because he didn't work miracles. The reason why they reject him was not because they didn't need him. The reason why they reject him was not because he didn't feed them. But the reason why they rejected him was because their deeds were dark. Good God Almighty. And it's hard for you to allow the spirit of righteousness and light to dwell on the inside of you. The same time as the spirit of darkness. Because something has got to go. And I want you to understand that where the spirit of the Lord is, uh, there is liberty. Hallelujah. And that is why darkness is beginning to flee from you because you now possess the spirit of God. The things you used to do, you don't do them no more. The things you used to listen to, you don't listen to it no more. You, you shut it down from the get-go. Don't come to me with no kind of hearing said. Don't come to me with no negativity because evil communication corrupt good morals. Sometimes a lot of you, you had some good mindset, but what happened is that you listen to the wrong people and all of a sudden it begins to corrupt your spirit. And now when you see me, you cannot look at me the same way and you don't even know if it's true. Presence of light. Hallelujah. The presence of light must be where the mirror is in order for it to properly reflect. The presence of light must be there. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I come to chase out every darkness in this place tonight. Hallelujah. I come to chase out every darkness that is in my life tonight. I come to chase it out. And so the mirror must work in the presence of light. Ah, this is so sweet. This is, this is so good. This is so good. Because now when I think about the topic, a reflection of his glory a reflection of his glory it means now it means now that god is the object and i'm only a reflection i'm only his image hallelujah i'm not the image but god is the image and what god is trying to do when he look at me is see himself in my spirit God doesn't want to see me. He wants to see himself. <laughs> because the Bible said that he is a jealous God. And he shares his glory with no man or nothing. Now, when a lot of you think about that, you might think that God is envious. 
But that's not what he's saying because jealousy, when you hear jealousy, envy is not the only meaning that is attached to it. But when you hear that word jealousy, when it comes to God, it means that he's defensive. God is defensive of his glory. You dare not try to take the glory of God. You dare not try to take the praise of God. You dare not try to take the worship of God. You dare not try to take the position of God. He's a jealous God. And rightly so, because the Bible says that in the beginning, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. That's true authority. When darkness heard the word of God, it fled and gave way to light. Hallelujah. And so now you realize that we have to make sure that we're reflecting the image of God. This is so good. This is so good. Now, I need you to understand now. I need you to understand that when it comes to the glory of God, the glory of God cannot be created Neither can it be destroyed. The glory of God cannot be created. Neither can it be destroyed. It can only be manifested differently. And so sometimes the glory of God will manifest in healing. Sometimes the glory of God will manifest in deliverance. Sometimes the glory of God will manifest in taking you to a higher level. Uh, and if I haven't touched what you're going through today, I want you to understand that the situation that is upon you is for the glory of God. That is why no one could help you fix it. That is why nobody could touch it. That is why nobody could figure it out. You have been to many different churches. You have been to many different pastors. You have been to many different counselors. But yet still nobody could tell you what the problem was with you. But then came a time when you put yourself in the presence of God. And God said, this is what I was waiting for. I was waiting for you to stop look to me and start looking on to me start looking to me because I have the answer I want you to understand that the impossible is only reserved for the glory of God is there anybody in the house with some impossible situation some situation that you couldn't fix all by yourself some situation that you have been going through for a long time some situation that is generational some situation that you couldn't understand why it is up on you because you are a good tither. You did the best you could to live right but yet still the thing that you feared most came up on you but I want you to understand that if something happened to you it is happening for the glory of God and whatever is for the glory of God it must shine bright. It must take you to a next level. Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm going to a next level. I'm going to a next level. Are you coming with me? Because because if no, I'm still going. I'm still going to the next level. Because God said, it's my time to shine. It is my time to shine. It is my time to shine. Come on, somebody repeat after me. It's my time to shine. It's my time to shine. Step aside, devil. Step aside, sickness. Step aside, low self-esteem. Step aside. Step aside. Step aside. It's my time to shine and I want you to understand that if my time come to shine you dare not stand in my way because God is going to clear you out if God allows some people to leave your life dream not about it don't cry about it God is just clearing the way so that you can shine for don't you understand that there's some people who are cloud chasers they will hunt you down when they see that you have certain things in life and so sometimes what God has to do he has to keep you on the down low until some people go before he lifts you up to a higher place and give you some stuff eyes have not seen ears have not heard and neither have it entered into heart of man touch your neighbor and tell him bet you didn't see this coming bet you didn't see this coming bet you didn't see my house coming bet you didn't see my job coming bet you didn't see my promotion coming bet you see the There's some blessing that is about to hit you on the blind side. 
Good God, there's some blessing that is about to hit you on the blind side. You didn't expect it. In fact, at this point in your life, where you are, what you have been through, you did not expect it. In fact, it should have never happened to you. But if God be for you, who? And so now, we realize that God is the object. And if God is the object and we are the reflection, then it means that we dare not do our own thing. See, when you look in the mirror, your image cannot move unless you move. And if you are a reflection of God, then it means that you cannot move when you want. But you got to wait on the Lord to move. Good God Almighty. Moses said, Lord, if you don't go, I'm not going. I'm going to stay right here, waiting by the river, Lord Jesus. Waiting down here by the river, Lord Jesus. Satan don't want me to cross. But Lord, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The reason why I'm not crossing on dry grounds is because I'm going to mount up over this. I'm going to mount up over this trouble. I'm going to mount up over this trials. It won't be able to keep me down no more. A lot of you have been looking to walk when God is ready for you to fly. God is ready to lift you to a higher place. The problem is that you have allowed low self-esteem to hold you down for too long. And people's opinion to hold you down for too long. And God is saying, arise and shine. Give God the glory. Arise and shine. Give God the glory. Good God Almighty. Oh, this is, this is so cool. I want to show you something. This is so cool. Oh, Lord. This is so good. Because you see, 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 the Bible says that God said, listen, can I have the scripture on the board, please? The Bible says something very powerful because the Bible is speaking about the glory of God. Hallelujah. The glory of God. You know, oftentimes, the glory of God come upon people who are least expecting it. And people who least expect other people to get to a certain level come upon those people. The people who nobody consider as greatness. Glory come upon them. Now watch this carefully. The Bible says, arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen Upon thee. <laughs> Good God Almighty, it's risen upon thee. Watch this carefully. This light, watch this carefully. This light, it is shining very nice. Hallelujah. You can see it in the light. But if we should turn off those lights, hallelujah. Can somebody get those lights for me? Can somebody get those light switch for me? I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Get those light switch. Get the ones over here. Because this is very important that we understand this. Watch this. Watch this now. Now you can see brighter. Now you can see brighter. Hallelujah. No, you can see brighter. No, you can see brighter. Good God. No, you can see brighter. The, 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 the Bible says the glory of the Lord is upon you. You see, currently we're in a time of darkness. But the glory of God is coming. You see, what you don't understand is that in order for the glory of God to be manifested, there must be an opportunity in the place of darkness or in the form of darkness in order for God's glory to shine there must be some room created by darkness this is why the Bible tells me now about Lazarus and how Lazarus was sick and Jesus got the news but the Bible says he seek knowledge and I listened to the news and he said listen to me this sickness is not unto death and Lazarus died Turn on the lights for me. Turn on the lights. Hallelujah. The sickness is not unto death and Lazarus died. Well, you, you just tell me it's not unto death. So why did he just die? But you need to understand that this was exactly what would have attracted the glory of God. 
You see, sometimes when the devil thinks that he has the best of you, sometimes when the devil thinks that he has a hole on you, and there is no way you're going to get out, some people call you dead. Some people write you off. Some people rip you off and leave you all by yourself. They leave you on the wayside to die. This is when God is coming. This is when he's ready to put in his appearance. Because sometimes we're not ready for God until everybody's done with us and so God is saying now that everyone is over you I'm ready to pick you up and plant your feet on higher ground I'm ready to lift you up and show them that if God be for you who can be against you I'm ready to pick you up and help them to understand that they meant it for bad but God meant it for glory and so now you need to understand now these are dark days but the Bible says the glory of God is upon you. Touch your neighbor and tell him the glory of God is upon you. The glory of God is upon you. Touch your neighbor and tell him the glory of God is upon you. The glory of God is upon you. And when the glory of God is upon you, you can't stay quiet. You can't sit down in his presence. You can't just give a casual praise. But you've got to give a praise that is effective because the effective prayer and pride of righteous avail it much. You need to understand that the glory of God will make you uncomfortable in failure. The glory of God will make you uncomfortable in mediocrity. The glory of God will make you uncomfortable in an abusive relationship. The glory of God will make you uncomfortable in a family where you're considered as a black sheep. The glory glory of God will lift you to a place so that people will see you and say, man, I did not been for the glory of God. I don't know. And so the glory is upon you. I don't know if you're getting it in your spirit, but I feel like God is talking to me. The glory of God is upon you because there's some people who tell me I will never make it this far. There's some people who tell me that I couldn't make it without them. There's some people who tell me that if they leave me I'm done but I'm here to tell them look at me now because the Lord has lifted me higher look at me now I've got a blessing in store look at me now you can't ignore me when I step into the room I pull attention because the glory of God is up on you it's not that like you're trying to show off it's not that like you're trying to prove that you're better than people but when the glory of God is up on you. You don't have to do nothing. You will step in the grocery store and they said you must be a child of God. You will step in the real place and they said you must be a child of God. And when you ask them how they know, they said I see a glow upon you. The glory is upon you. Touch your neighbor and tell him I'm talking to you. The glory is upon you. You might not think of yourself as much. The glory is upon you. You might think that you're too old, but the glory is upon you. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. The glory is upon you. Because as long as I still have life, I still have hope. And once I got hope, I know that God is going to pull me through. Sarah was old and Abraham was old. You're not just dealing with one old person person but you're dealing with two old issues i don't know about you is there anybody in the house who is dealing with some old problems you've got some old situations that are trying to take you over some old things that are trying to pull you down you're trying to run away but i needed to understand that god came today to set his glory upon you so that you can feel the fire of the holy ghost and you can understand that when god shows up he's here to show off and to show Show you that no one else can hold you down. The Bible tells me about Job. Oh, Job went down and nothing seemed to be going right. Job was in the ashes. But when God came through for Job, Job shake off himself. Jesus, shake off yourself. Shake off. Shake off. Come on! Shake up yourself. Shake up yourself. Get up out of the dust. 
dust. God pull you from the dust already. Don't go back. In the beginning, God created man from the dust and put him up. Don't go back to the dust. Don't go back to the dust. Stay up. Yes. Oh, yes. The glory is upon you. Hallelujah. It is not you that is upon the glory, but the glory is upon you. You see, when the glory is upon you, then it means that the spotlight hits you. Good God Almighty, I don't know if you've ever been to those show where everybody's doing their own thing. But once the spotlight comes on, it means that it's time for you to perform. When the spotlight hits you, it means that glory hits you. And when you're in the spotlight, you can't do your own thing. You got to perform for the Lord. When the spotlight hits you, you got to get up and do something. You can't stay quiet. You can't just sit down. I know everything seems like it's going to fail, but the spotlight is up on me. Somebody's watching me. Somebody want to see me do something with my life. Somebody want to see me make a difference. Somebody want to see me make a change. The spotlight is up on you. Good God Almighty. I don't care where you have been, what you have done. The spotlight is up on you. And once the spotlight is up on you, it's time to perform. Oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Because the Bible tells me that the Apostle Paul was Saul before. And you see, Saul now went to the high priest and those who were in authority to seek permission to go and touch the people of God. And so now he was on his way to Damascus. And while he was on his way to Damascus, I want you to understand that something happened. Because I don't care who you go to for authority. If you didn't go to authority from God. You dare not touch the church. That's why I can declare, back up my family devil. You don't have no authority. Leave my wife alone. You have no authority. Leave my kids alone. You have no authority because if you didn't get it from God, you can't use it against the church because the Bible said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That is why I'm still flying. That is why I won't give up because the Spirit of God is still in the church and he's moving here. He's moving there. Just like Mm. and so the apostle Paul now he was on his way to Damascus because he's ready he's going with his army he's going with his friends he's going and he knows that they're afraid of him but then the Bible says while he was on his way a light shine run about him good God almighty the spotlight hits him and when the spotlight hit him the Bible says Jesus said listen you have to change now you don't have a choice because the spotlight light is up on you. Some of you you may have been murderer. Some of you you may have been liars. But I don't care where you're walking from today. If the glory of God comes up on you, then it means that the spotlight is up on you. And it's time to perform. I would dare you now to step out of sin and step in his marvelous light. I would encourage you now to leave those situation and follow the Lord because the spotlight The spotlight is up on you. You see, see, that's why some of us, we can't relax too much because the spotlight is up on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is truly amazing. Oh, Lord.